good morning. Glad to see we already got two on, ready to go. Uh, we're going to give it maybe a minute or so and see if we have anybody else jump on. And then, uh, and then we're going to get started. So, hey, nice day outside. A little on the chilly side this morning. I think there was a frost advisory, but it's going to warm up throughout the day. And hey, we got a third. Awesome. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this weekend's going to be gorgeous, I think. A uh, little rain Saturday, like after, late afternoon, evening. So if you're going to do anything this weekend, get out on Saturday morning before about one o'clock, because it looks like that's about when the uh, when the rain is supposed to start. But I don't know if anybody noticed, but here in Wisconsin next week, we're supposed to get temps that are like 80 degrees. So yeah, last year we like spring never came winter lasted straight into like june and now we're going to get summer in may go figure i'm um, going to give it another 30 or 40 seconds see if we get any more jumper honors uh doing a uh, a real mixed workout today we have done in the past start with a little bit of warm-up and maybe a little bit of uh, kind of agility inspired work we're going to go into uh, 20 minutes of strength training uh, and you're going to need a mat if you want a mat and of course you're going to need your you're going to need your water bottle today if you don't normally have a water bottle you're probably going to want one today and then uh, we're going to finish up with uh, with our our usual ten minutes of cardio endurance work, and that's going to be my three by five five exercises, three rounds, thirty seconds on, ten seconds off. So be prepared to work for that one. All right, so I think we're about ready to get going. Make sure you got a little bit of space around you. Um, and don't bump into your friends if you got friends right there. And uh, let's go. I hope you got some good, inspiring music right there by you. Um, but we're just going to start with a little, we're going to pull up and kind of lift up out of the toes a little bit as you do that. So we're getting the hips, the glutes working, working through the calves a little bit. We're going to we're going to be using those calves in a little bit as we do some agility work that has been inspired by ladder drills. So if you've ever seen those agility ladders, like the big flat things that lay out on the ground that have all the, the rungs in between and like soccer players and football players do drills on those. We're going to do some stuff that's inspired by, you know, Behind the back, behind the head, behind the back, behind the head. We're going to do some stuff that's inspired by those agility ladders. Let me start my, keep going, I'm going to start my timer here. Inspired by those agility ladders for some of our warm-up and agility work today. We're going to do a little bit of a wide stance. We're going to get ready. We're going to reach high overhead on one side and then down on the other side. Reach, reach. Just get a little bit loose before we do some of this agility work. I'm looking forward to getting out for a, for a run a little bit later today. I haven't been able to the last couple of days. Boy, for I've been my schedule's been really full the last couple of days. But one more here, good, and then we're gonna touch down and back up. Wide stance, touch down, back up. I want you to feel. The hamstrings work here. Gently, not doing a lot of, not doing a little tough work, but this is just kind of a warm up, loosen up before we do some of that agility ladder stuff. Let's go three more. Three, two, 
two, and one. Great. All right. So I want you to imagine that agility ladder on the, on the floor in front of you with those squares. I'm going to adjust this down a little bit so you can kind of see the floor a little bit better. Okay. So imagine that agility ladder in front of you on the, uh, on the floor. We're just going to work with a couple of squares because I know that your space is limited. You're right there at home. So I want you to imagine maybe two squares in front of you. We're going to get both feet in each of those squares, both feet back. Foot, 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 foot. Staying up on the balls of your feet, foot. Foot, 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 foot. Foot, 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 foot. Two in, two back. Two in, two back. Two in, two back. Don't worry about how fast you're going. Worry about just planting those feet side by side and then backwards side by side. Now, as usual with agility work, get those arms moving too. They're going to help you control that motion. They're going to help you control the core. They're going to help you time out the feet a little bit better. Two. And one. Hop. We're going to hop, 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 hop. Two forward, two back. I want you to think about getting over the rungs of that ladder as you do this. Hopping is a skill that a lot of kids really have to work to develop. And I've seen some grown-ups also that can't hop. It's just the timing thing. Sometimes it's really challenging for people to move with both feet at the same time. One more forward and back. Nice. Let's go that two in, two out. Two back. Two forward, two back. And it's okay to wash your feet if you need to. I just lost my time. There we go. How embarrassing that the leader of the workout is actually getting tripped up by the timing of the exercise he himself picked out. Two and one. Similar exercise, but I want you to imagine that ladder going side to side now. So we're just going to use a couple of rungs going side to side. Same thing. One, two. One, two. One, two. So imagine that middle rung is right here. We're going to come feet into that middle rung. Let's go one, two, three right now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Once we get used to that one, two, three, we're going to add that trailing tap. So, really good coordination work. Really good as a general warm up. Yeah, I just lost my timing. There we go. Got it back. Got it back. Four, three, two, one. Now, that hop we did side to side, or that forward and back, we're going to translate that into side to side. So we're going to one, two, one, two. One, two, 
one, two. Try to do both feet leave the floor and both feet land at the same time. Thinking a little bit more forward on your foot, kind of up on the balls of your feet. If you're looking at me sideways, you can see I got a little bounce. I'm not slamming down with my whole foot. I'm using one more side to side. The natural shock absorbing properties of my foot to give me a little cushion in that. So I'm not slamming my feet down, trying to land like a cat will land. Okay? We're going to do that two and two out side to side. We're going to start one, two, three, one, two, three. And then once we get the timing down on this, we're going to add that trailing tap. If you don't feel like you got the timing for that trailing tap, that's okay. Stick with this one, two, three. But if you can do that trailing tap, even better. Four, three, two, one. Hop side to side. Hop, 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 hop. Ready? Remember, you want to think about kind of clearing those rungs of the ladder. Four, three, two, one. Awesome. Shake it out just a little bit if you need to. Get a quick sip of water. One last ladder exercise. What are you going to do? We're going to do the hopscotch on the ladder. Uh, why don't you imagine just that single ladder, the squares. In the square, out of the square. In the square, out of the square. In, out, in, out, in, out. Now, here's the challenge. If you don't have enough room to move forward, stay static. If you don't feel like you have enough coordination to move forward, stay static, that's okay. But if you can, we're gonna move forward into each square, back into each square. Out square, out square, out square, out square. Out square, out square, out square, out square. Little forward motion to add a coordination challenge into this drill. Out square, out square, out square, out square. Out square. Out square, out square, out square. Two more forward and back. Last one. Nice. So there was about 10 minutes worth of war up and agility. Hey, we got four. Awesome. Welcome. I am so glad you're here today. Thank you for joining us. If you're coming in late on the warm up, and now we got five. Awesome. If you're coming in late on the, late on the warm up, we just finished up a uh, warm up. We finished up some agility work. If you missed that and want to review it after this video is done this morning, after this live stream is done this morning, you can go back to my YouTube channel. You can look at that video and uh, get a rundown on that warm up and agility work. You should be really feeling your calves right now. That was a lot of calf work. There was a lot of lower body work. We're going to move into some strength work. So you're not going to need. Actually, no, you are going to need your mat right away. So you're going to want a mat. If you're using a mat for floor work, you definitely want to have that water bottle. Let me grab my mat real quick. Since I left the back, here's the back of my room. And I've got my mat. Now, first thing you're going to want to do 
first exercise is actually not a mat exercise. We're just going to little, do a little step side to side. So we've done a lot of lower body work. The lower body should be ready to go. We're going to start to your feet right next to each other and standing in a big tall shoulder position. And take a big step out to the side, big step, reach down and touch, back together, big step, reach down and touch together. Now, as I do this, and I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what I'm talking about, I want you to think that back nice and flat. So I'm going to show you what I don't mean. I'm not drooling down like this, I'm keeping that chest. Lifting those shoulders back, that head in a more neutral position. So my back isn't straining for this. I can feel these muscles here, hamstrings and leg, hamstrings and glutes. Back facing you. Four, three, Two, one. Roy, oh Roy, how can I progress that motion if that feels too easy? Well, if you've got, say, a dumbbell or a kettlebell or another type of weighted object, hold it in one hand. We're going to reach down. We're going to reach out as low as you feel like you can with that weighted object. Come up and switch hands and then switch off. So if you've got some weight there at home, if you've got some dumbbells, feel free to grab a dumbbell and do that exercise with that dumbbell. Perfectly okay. It's gonna add a little bit of challenge. As long as you feel like you are controlling the weight, the weight is not controlling you, you're doing good. In a kneeling position, second exercise, this is why I had to get the mat out. We're gonna reach back as far as you can with one hand and up, touch the floor, Switch off side, refactoring it, touch the floor. There's some quad work here, quadriceps, quads of the thighs. There's some core work here. Reaching up as high as you can with that upper arm, reaching back as far as you can with that bottom arm. If you can't touch the floor, just go as low as you can. Here's fine. Here's fine, but I want you to reach as far as you can confidently go. Remember the key here is control. You should be controlling the motion or the weight, not the motion or the weight controlling you. You should feel like you can maintain at all times. Five, four, three, two, one. I like that one. It's not too intense, but you can really feel those muscles working. Quick sip of water if you need it. We're going to switch into that side step, touch down. Here is where if you've got a dumbbell or a kettlebell or another weighted object that you want to use, you can reach. We're going opposite, opposite. So if you're stepping out with the left, you're reaching down with the right. Then switch hands with that heavier object. And we're switching off side to side. Tell you what, I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to grab a dumbbell here off of my hand to get a dumbbell rack. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So if I'm holding a dumbbell, you don't have to. If I'm holding a dumbbell, I'm going to step out and reach down, switch, reach down. Reach, reach. Now I know some of you have dumbbells at home. I know most of you probably do not. That's why I'm doing all these workouts so you don't have to use any weight. This dumbbell is not a requirement for this exercise. It adds a little layer of challenge to it if you've got that option available to you. Big step to the side, reach down, nice neutral spine, keeping that chest lifted, hinging forward from the hip, not slouching from the back, just going as low as you can confidently go with control. Two and one. 
Nice. We'll put this dumbbell aside. You could do this with a dumbbell as well and switch hands as you then either with the low position or the high position. I'm not going to do this with a dumbbell today. We're going to reach back, reach and touch, reach and touch. It's kind of a reverse windmill. Focus on feeling the core, feeling the fronts of the thighs, the quadriceps muscles. Five, four, three, two, one. Right on. Take a quick breather if you need it. Take a quick sip of water if you need it. We're going to do those two exercises once more for a total of three rounds on that. If you're using the dumbbell, great. Go ahead and grab it now. <clears throat> Stepping wide out to the side. He's got the grind. Step, touch, step, touch. Focusing hamstrings and glutes. So think about those muscles, that big muscle in your butt. Think about the muscles up to the backs of your legs. And what's going to help you get a feel for engaging those is imagine pushing the floor away from you with that trailing foot right here. Push the floor away, push the floor away. We're gonna have four more. Four, three, two, one. Kneeling windmill. Reverse windmill is what I'm calling this. There might be a better name for it. But we can remember that, right? We can remember reverse windmill. Reach up, back and touch, back and touch. Now, while I've got your attention, and you're a captive audience, if you usually follow my Friday workouts, which are my chair-based workouts, my Friday workouts are normally at 9 a.m. on Fridays, this week is going to be 8 a.m. because of a scheduling issue. We've got two more inside. One, two, one, two. Right on. So if you normally sit in on my chair workouts on Friday, it's going to be 8 a.m. instead of my typical 9 a.m. If you don't know about my chair workouts, they are fantastic. If you've been doing a lot of hard work throughout the week and need some active recovery, they're very much based in some very light strength work, some mobility work, and a little bit of balance work up out of the chair. If you have somebody in your life who is challenged with balance, with coordination, with mobility, with strength, an older adult maybe, or somebody who's had a stroke or something, the chair workouts are a perfect, perfect, perfect workout for them. It's very light, but still at an appropriately challenging level for somebody with those sorts of limitations. The next two sets of exercises are just gonna be right down here on the mat. So what we're gonna do, First one, we're going to start in this quadruped position, this all fours position. We're going to shift back a little bit to the point where you feel like you're just where you can engage your glutes and keep your back straight if you lift your hands up off the floor. Because really that's what we're doing here. Is we're tucking the elbows back, we're turning the hands to the floor, and trying to keep the back and the hips at the same exact position. Because of this position, you're going to be balanced forward. Your center of gravity is going to be forward in your body this way. 
you're going to have to engage those legs, those glutes. You're going to have to really keep that back tall and or not tall, but straight and neutral to keep yourself from face planting here. Let me give you a tip on this. Let's go two more. Four, a two, and one. Nice. Let me give you a tip on this for when we come back to repeat this. So I'm right here in this in this forward position. You saw how my hips were shifted back just a little bit, and I lift up. What helps me get the glutes engaged, and I think it's going to help you get the glutes engaged, imagine what your knees are doing. Push your knees out to the sides like you're trying to spread that mat out in front of you. When you do that, when you try to push your knees out to the sides, you should feel those glutes really engage. That's the key to success in that exercise, to being able to keep those hips shifted just slightly back from the knees and not face plant on that. Get those glutes, get those hamstrings, get those legs really engaged. And part of the way you can do that is try to push that mat apart with your, with your knees. Second exercise, slow climb. So we're going to be up at the top of a push-up position. We're going to bring the knee up and across. But when we do that, we're going to turn into it. Turn, turn. Slow climb with a twist. We got some quads. We got some hips. We got some obliques here. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't care what you say, that is not an easy exercise. All right, quick sip of water if you need it. Come back into that, that quadruped position. Now, remember the tip I gave you before. Imagine pushing those knees out to the sides like you're trying to spread this mat out, okay? Press those knees out, you're gonna feel the glutes engage right away. Get your hands a little bit closer. Find that point of balance. We're gonna lift up and down. Up and down. You should feel like when you pick those hands up off the mat, you have to fight, not for your right to party. You have to fight to keep yourself from tipping forward. That's where your balance point should be. If your hips are shifted too far forward over your knees, you will tip over. If your hips are shifted too far back, you're going to be like, eh, this is super easy. Find that sweet spot where you feel like you are just on the line of getting ready to tip. So you have to really engage those glutes to keep this positioning. If you've got some light dumbbells, and I emphasize light, don't start too heavy on this, you can do this with two dumbbells on either side, or one dumbbell, I'm going to say two dumbbells, in each, one in each hand. That's going to add a little layer of challenge to this. Two and one. That's going to add a little layer of challenge to that exercise without killing you. It's going to change your center of balance slightly depending on how you pull back. If you pull back right along your leg line, you'll be just fine. If you try to pull back in the front toward the shoulders, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna be kissing the mat. Hands and toes. Ready, here we go. Slow climb twist, slow climb twist. Count to 20. Four, five, six. Not too fast. Three, two, one. Nice. Once more with those two exercises. Find that sweet spot where glutes are super engaged. Push those knees out to the sides. Feel that tighten up immediately. 
Get that back posture nice and tall and neutral. Lift that chest a little bit. Up and down. Just on the line where you feel you're about to tip forward when you finger, pull your fingertips up off the floor. Working on fighting balance points. Working on engaging glutes. Working on teaching that spine, that neutral deadlift position. Getting those upper back muscles working. Four, three, two, one. Be honest, don't answer if you don't want to. Who tipped forward at least once on that and had to catch themselves? I've done that several times. Not today, thank goodness. That would be embarrassing. Top of the push-up position, slow climb with a twist. Turn, turn. Four, three, two, one. Oh, yeah. All right, moving into two different exercises for our last two exercise circuit of strength before we get into our cardio endurance segment. Hope you're ready for that. Did you have a coffee this morning? I did. I might need another one after this. All right. On elbows and knees. Now, the farther you get back on this with your knees, the tougher that's going to feel. So as we go through this, I want you to find a spot where you can manage this, but it feels challenging. Once you find elbows and knees, hands get planted on the floor, we're going to do tricep extensions, down and up. The farther back you get on this with your knees, the tougher that feels. So if I'm really close in here, that could feel very, very easy. The farther back I get, the tougher it feels. Let's do three more. Three, two, one. The target there is right through the backs of the arms. Now, if you can get those knees back a little farther and still control that motion and get those reps out, you're gonna feel the core kick in a little bit too. Maybe a little bit through the hips, but for sure the core, the farther back you get your knees. The closer your knees get to your elbows, the easier that's gonna feel. And if that's the point where you're at, that's okay. Don't feel like you have to do my workout. Okay, I'm here giving you a serving suggestion, just like in the front of the box. You take that serving suggestion and you prep it the way you feel like you need to do it today. Maybe you did a lot of tricep work this week, okay, and it's not working for you. Ease that intensity down. Maybe you're a brand new exerciser. You haven't joined me for workouts before, and those are really tough. You get to the point where you can do them and challenge yourself each time you do. Okay, second exercise. In this, we'll call it a wonky down dog position. It's not exactly down dog because I suck at down dog. We're gonna bring the knee in, kick the knee out. Try to keep the hips in the same place and just rocking that leg in and out. Heel up. Five, four, three, two, one. Try and keep the hips and the spine as steady and stable as possible there. Same thing, other leg. We're going a little bit more than 20 minutes on this strength. That's okay. 
Kick up high, pull in tight. Five, four, three, two, one. What boy, you're expecting me to hold that position right after we did tricep extensions. That's tough. <laughs> I know. I planned that on purpose. I did. I'll admit it. I planned that on purpose. <laughs> tricep extensions. Get those knees back as far as you feel like you can while still maintaining control and being able to perform motion. Hands planted, extend, and drop. Don't just drop slow control. Now, let's say you started out in a position that's too difficult. Move in as you go. Three. Two, one. Just like if you started in a position that was too easy, you can move back as you go. That's okay. Adjust as you go. That's one of the nice things about body weight exercises like this, is you can adjust that position and that intensity as you go. Up here, pull it in, kick it back. Tight and high, tight and high. Apparently, I just triggered my Amazon Echo. Three, two, one. Same thing on the side. Ready? Tight and high. Try to keep those hips in the back as steady as you can. Just moving that leg. Three, two, one. Please don't criticize that yoga position because I'm not a yoga instructor. We're not here to do yoga. We're here to work those triceps, the shoulders, the hips, and the hamstrings. Please, so please don't send me hate mail about my dog dog, dog, dog position. I know that it's awful. Elbows and knees, find that sweet spot, plant the hands. Here we go. We're extending 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, you can do it, 2, 1. Oh, yeah. Hands, toes, butt up in the air, tuck. Kick, top, kick. Five, four, three, think glute, two, and hamstring, one. Ready? Other side. Here we go. Tuck, kick. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, great eye. Sip of water. You are not going to need this mat for our cardio endurance segment, but you will need like a section of wall or a door frame, something you can put your hands onto and lean back against. 
if you have like a super heavy sectional sofa and, it, and if you lean into it, it's not going to slide, that's an option for you. Put them that way. I do not need it today anymore. All right, so do it. So I'm up against the wall work. So I'm going to find the wall. Found it right where I left it. I got my cheat sheet here. And I got my Gym Next Flex Timer. I've got this set for 15 rounds. 30 seconds work, 10 seconds rest. That comes up to 10 minutes total. So, we got a 10 second countdown. We're gonna start, sprinter starts. Three, two, one, go. Long, drive that knee. Like you're a sprinter starting off a starting block. The lower you get on these, the tougher it feels. Don't worry about speed here, just keep it moving. If you can go faster, great, as long as you're not losing the balance. We're going 30 seconds. Three, two, one, rest. 10 seconds off. We're doing the same thing, other side. Three, two, okay. one, go. Get long and knee up. If you need to put your hand against your wall or your sofa or something for balance, that's okay. I'd rather you pull for balance than tip over. Not like I've ever done that before. <laughs> Three, two, one, rest. Second exercise, or third exercise, really. Twist tops. Twist, twist, Three, twist, twist. Two, one, go. Twist. You go as slow or as fast as you feel like you can go. But the goal is to twist into the lower body. Get those hips side to side. Three, two, one. Keep your shoulders pointing forward. Exercise four. Hands against the wall. Three, two, one, in place. Two, one, go. Push the wall. Push the wall. Keep it moving. Run a little faster, break. Pace yourself. It's 30 seconds, remember. Get those feet up off the floor. Three, two, one, rest. Exercise five. Chops with our invisible ball. We've done this before. Three. Let it stand. Two, A lot of force down to the go. side. Chop, chop. Not just the motion. Think force behind those arms. Like you're throwing something down really hard and stopping short. Think about engaging those abdominal muscles. Three, two, one, and rest. We're rolling down to the side and stop short. You should feel that glute really kick in. Going back up to sprinter starts. Three, two, one, go. The biggest muscles by volume in your body are from the hips down. So something like this, using really big muscles, it's gonna burn through a lot of energy. It's gonna burn through a lot of oxygen. Three, two, one, rest. 
It's going to demand your heart rate increase. It's going to demand that your breathing increase. Three, two, one, go. So if you feel like, wow, I'm really sucking wind on this exercise, that's good. That's normal. That's your body reacting the way it should to intense exercise. As your heart rate increases, your temperature increases. Three, two, one, rest. And your body needs to cool itself down. So it's gonna to start to sweat. Three, two, one, go. Now, not everybody sweats the same during exercise. Some people are just genetically predisposed to be profuse sweaters. I'm pretty much one of those. Two, one, rest. And seconds off, wall run. Some people don't sweat very much. They cool off more Three, effectively. Two, one, go. By that heavy breathing, which is another way your body cools itself down during intense efforts through breathing, panting, if you will. Invisible wall. Three, two, one. And what I said. Go. A lot of force coming down. If you're trying to throw something down to the ground hard enough to break it. Stop a little short. Feel those abdominals and those glutes really engage to control the spine and the hips. Those place through. One more time. You can do this. Hang in there. Three, two, start. one, go. Drive, drive, drive. We only have like three minutes to go. You can do it. Seconds off, other side. A little time to catch your breath. Not much time to get a drink of water. Three, two, do it if you want to, though. Go. Go. And if you're if you're having an off day, if your cardio endurance is down, if you're a new exerciser and you don't feel like you can make it through 30. Seconds of these. Go 10 seconds, rest 10 seconds. Go 10 seconds, rest 10 seconds. That'll be 40 seconds. Three, two, one, rest. Which, with 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, is our total interval time. Your internet connection is unstable. Three, two, one, 45 degree. Go. Twist tops.
three, two, one, rest. Last exercise, invisible ball chops. You ready in five seconds? Three, two, one, go. Chop, chop, chop. A lot of force. If you were saving anything from the last 30 seconds, here we are. And now you only got 20 seconds. 15. 10. Five. Three, two, one, done. Done. Virtual high five. Yeah. Nice work. Get a mat. Get a little standing stretching, a little seated stretching. Now, presumably you get your wall there. It's still where you left it. That foot closest to the wall, we're gonna cross over the front to the outside. The hand out away from the wall, we're gonna reach overhead and try and touch. And hold. We did quite a lot of lateral motion and stuff that engages the side of the hip. We're going to stretch those hips out to help keep them limber. Now, stretching doesn't necessarily decrease soreness. Soreness is, is most commonly caused. We did the same thing on the side. Hand the wall. Inside foot crosses over the front, reach up and over. Soreness is commonly caused by what's called micro tears in muscle. When you work the muscle and stress it beyond its current capabilities, which is what you should be doing with strength training, you cause minor amounts of damage to that muscle. Tiny little micro tears where some fibers of the muscle will actually develop a little tear. That's perfectly normal. That's exactly what's expected to happen. But as your body goes in to repair those tears, it creates inflammation. Inflammation is the marker that your body uses to send stuff into repair. And that inflammation combined with those little micro tears can result in Muscle soreness. We're going to use the mat to stretch out. Moving on to the floor. Ankle over the knee, reach through, grab your knee, and pull it in. So, stretching then does not necessarily reduce soreness because stretching does not eliminate the micro tearing of muscle, the micro fractures of muscle, where those little muscle fibers get torn. What stretching does is it helps improve the, the elasticity of that muscle. It helps keep that muscle from being too tight so that when you switch in size, by the way, so when you, oh yeah, when you walk around during the day, you don't look like the Tin Man in need of an oil can. You're actually able to move those joints because those muscles are limber. Limber. I love that word, limber. All right, we're going to flip over. We're going to do one last stretch. Child's pose, basically. Sitting back toward the heels. Reach way out in front. Get as long as you can. Okay. 
and hold. I usually recommend 20 to 30 seconds for a stretch. The minimum effective amount is 15 to 20 seconds. You can hold a stretch longer than that if it feels good. Let's bring those hips back up. Hands and knees on the floor, arch up just a little bit. Ah. And that's it for today. I want to thank you all for joining me. I want to thank the two of you who stuck it out for the entire workout, stretching included. Uh, have a fantastic day. The weather is going to steadily improve over the next several days. And I, for one, am looking forward to that. And I'm sure you probably are as well. So uh, if you're local, maybe I'll see you out and about. Maybe. Uh, get plenty of water. Get a little snack. We burned through a lot today. We did a lot. You guys did awesome. The two, those, those of you who stuck out this entire workout, kudos to you, really. That was not an easy workout. I'm sweaty. So remember Friday, my chair workout. If you are tending to be stiff and sore by the time we hit Friday and you need something just to move around a little bit, or if you tend to be a little bit lighter on uh, on your ability for strength and balance and mobility, that's a great workout for you. So if there's an older adult or somebody maybe with some mobility issues in your life, let them know about that. They can join my workout 8 a.m. on Friday this week, 8 on Friday instead of the usual 9. So watch for that. Uh, hope I see you there and have a, have a fantastic day.